You know, on my way here this morning, I was reminded of the zookeeper who early one morning noticed that the orangutan was reading two books. In one hand, he held Darwin's Origin of Species, in the other, the Bible. And the zookeeper, in amazement, walked up to the ape and asked him, why are you reading both those books? And the ape replied, well, I'm just trying to figure out whether I'm my keeper's brother or my brother's keeper. <laughs> it's that age-old question, where did we come from? But it's essentially a human question, isn't it? Because we are the only animals that dig up the fossilized bones of our ancestors in search of an answer. Now, I've written about the most common answers or beliefs regarding the question, where do we come from? The best evidence for each, where there is any. And through personal interviews, reveal why people often believe what just ain't so. But for our purposes today, I'll focus on the two most prominent and certain, certainly controversial answers to that question, evolution. The scientific theory of the natural development of all life on Earth first put forward by Charles Darwin almost 150 years ago. And then there's creation. This is a belief that has been held in every known civilization. Now, the creationists believe that each individual form of life, as Jeannie said, has been specially created and uniquely created through a divine miracle, a divine creator or a supreme being. Today in America, creationist belief has some aliases and goes by names like creationism, which is not really a religion as much as it is a social and political movement. Then we have creation science, an oxymoron if there ever was one. <laughs> creation science doesn't do any good for science or faith. So-called creation scientists take scientific facts to fit into their translation of ancient scripture. And finally, there's intelligent design, the creationist's new stealth weapon. Intelligent design is creationism without the G word, but a much more subtle and sinister movement. Now, the intelligent design crowd will have you believe that there is complexity in life. There is a level of it that can never be explained through natural processes alone, certainly not by science or the theory of evolution. And often they use as an example the complexity of the human eye. And yet today, geneticists feel they have found the universal instruction manual for eyes in all animals. Everywhere we've looked for this gene, it's a powerful, complex developmental gene, and everywhere we've looked for it, we found it in every organism where we sought it, including all those creatures that we see up there on the screen. Now, the bottom line here is that evolution is clever, but it's also efficient. It can use the same hammer nails, the same genetic ass assets to build complexity in all its various forms. So then, we have to ask ourselves, why is it that despite that, we're still arguing about teaching the science of evolution in our science classrooms. Makes sense to me. Well, to really answer that question, we have to know a little more about the folks in the debate, and that's what we're going to try to do here. Gallup polls for the past 30 years have consistently shown that only one out of 10 Americans, only 10 of us, believe in evolution. That sounds a little small to me, does it to you? We'll get to that in a minute. I call these the strict evolutionists. They believe that all, only natural processes alone without the help of God are responsible for the development of life on Earth. And here come the creationists. Fully 44% of all Americans will answer those same polls, sometimes up to 47% saying, I am a creationist. Let me stop and say that this level of creationist belief is unique to America. In fact, Creationism itself rarely exists outside the United States, except for pockets in Australia, New Zealand, Russia. Americans are three times more likely than the Norwegians, five times more likely than the Brits, to believe in the literal truth of the story of creation in Genesis. Now, I know you're way ahead of me. Those of you who can see this are adding up to 10% in the 44%. I know how you are. You're a very bright, analytical bunch, and you're saying, Okay, where are all the rest of the folks? I'm glad you asked me that. Meet the moderates. Fully 40% of all Americans answer those same Gallup polls saying they have a mixed belief. They believe in both evolution or accept evolution, 
and science and objective reasoning, but they make room in their personal beliefs for the possibility of an ultimate cause, perhaps spiritual or supernatural reason for life. Now, although the Gallup polls always say there's 40% of those folks out there, my survey and other recent surveys indicate that these moderate believers may in fact be the majority in America today. How can I say that? Well, it depends on how you ask the question. If you are a moderate, and I know many of you out there may be, I know Hal is because he told me he was, and I ask you, do you believe that natural processes alone are responsible for all life and human origins, or do you believe in creation? There's that either or question. How would you answer? Now, it would probably depend on your own personal belief, wouldn't it? Or perhaps the kind of statement you were trying to make when you answered the question. So surveys that allow for a response for the moderates indicate that there may be as many as 60 to 70 percent of all Americans that are moderates. And that kind of reduces the strict creationist belief, if you will, to 20 percent. So as I often say, it's 20 percent of the folks that are making 80 percent of the noise. The Pope's a moderate. It's hard to categorize or describe moderate belief, but the Pope is a moderate because back in 1996, in a famous encyclical you may be aware of, he assured his flock they could accept evolution as the correct explanation for the development of life on Earth because, as he went on to say, science can tell us an awful lot about how we descended from monkeys, but it can't say anything about the human soul. And that's right. That's not the venue of science. Now, the closest group that I can think of that holds a lot of different moderate beliefs, beliefs that you would be, be knowledgeable about would probably be the Unitarians. And yet, moderate beliefs tend to be very personal, very individual. Among the moderates, I include people such as non-theists who are somewhat spiritually oriented, those who would tend to be perhaps Buddhist or hold some of the beliefs of the Eastern traditions, up through the agnostics, the deists, and even practicing Christians such as the Pope. Or a moderate might believe in science, evolution, but always hold out for another answer, a different cause for that first spark of life. Now let's quickly compare and contrast the beliefs of these people in the debate on six key questions related to where we came from. The first is, how did we get here? What was the role of God if there was any? How old is the earth? How old are we? How old are modern humans? What's the evidence? You know, the guy says, show me the money, but for me, show me the evidence. And where do we go to look for truth? Here's the evolutionist, the strict evolutionist, the 10% out there. Natural processes alone were responsible for the development of humans, modern humans. There was no role for God. The Earth is billions of years old, that's what the geological evidence tells us, and modern humans, well, we've been around for at least 40,000 years, and usually in evolution we we'll will also accept, as I do, that there are characteristics and features that we all have in us that have been around for at least hundreds of thousands of years, maybe even millions of years. Where does the evolutionist go? to get evidence and what do they look for. Well, I got a little carried away there. The evolutionist looks for the stones, the bones, the genes, the fossils, the chemical and physical laws of life. Those same things that operate the world around us and allow all of us to go out and get in our car in the morning and perhaps drive to work. Where does the evolutionist find truth? Not just for the question of human origins, but generally. They look towards science, its facts, its theories, and objective reasoning. Okay, here come the creationists. How do we get here? It was a divine miracle. God had a direct and hands-on role, very busy. How old is the earth? And again, as uh, Jeannie often says, you know, there are the young earth and the old earth creationists, and there's still some young earthers hanging around. It says, we read our Bible, and the earth is only 10,000 years old. But most progressive creationists will agree that the earth is billions of years old. How about modern humans? How long have we had modern humans? Well, a creationist may say only 10,000 years, or a more progressive one might say, yes, there's evidence for 40,000 years that modern humans, you and I, have been around. But if you're talking to a creationist, especially some of the more progressive ones, and you're not sure what they believe, and I've interviewed many of these people, you just wait a little while, and at some point, they will say that...